In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once again, it's so wonderful to have everyone, or not everyone, but many of our people back in our church here. And so, as we gather on this, the feast day of Corpus Christi, we give thanks to God for the great gift that is the most holy body and blood of Jesus Christ. We are able, in a very profound way, more than any other Christian religion, to receive the very presence, body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. We are able to receive God into our very lives and hopefully by receiving the Eucharist to be transformed and to go out into the world and strive to build up God's kingdom of heaven here on earth, as we say in the, our, our Father prayer. Look at that prayer there. Give us this day our daily bread. And then we also say, not, you know, uh, uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We see so much evil in our world, and we see that if you ever turn on the news, or maybe you see some own uh, hatred or anger, maybe in this time of pandemic, and this time of lockdown, we've seen people maybe resorting to hatred or violence or prejudices in their own hearts. We want to root that out completely. And we see how evil enters into the world when our churches are closed, when we cannot receive readily that food for the journey. Look back to our first reading today and how the Israelites are traveling. They have just escaped uh, from Egypt, from enslavement to sin and, and, and enslavement to the Egyptians, and they are wandering through the desert. I think that's many of us right now as we're wandering through the desert because we did not have that Eucharist, the actual presence of body, the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ in our lives was denied us. We were starved of it. And yet, we continued to move on. Some complaining that went along the way, just as the Israelites did. Nonetheless, your priests, we wanted to bring communion to you, but we wanted to do that in a safe and holy way. Let us never take for granted ever again the Eucharist. We never want to take for granted this holy place here at St. Damien's Church or any church when we walk in and we come into the house of the Lord. House has changed quite a bit, though, as you look around the church here, and even for our par parishioners and those watching from our live stream at home, the way that we celebrate has changed very drastically over the last almost four months now. There's a sadness there, and there's an uncomfortability there. I invite you to look back into Scripture. I invite you to look at what happens to the Israelites after they had gone into the Promised Land, after they had everything that they had desired from God, the land of milk and honey. They were worshiping in their temple, in the temple area there. They had the Ark of the Covenant, the law of God written, and they were able to go and offer sacrifice to God in that holy place. They started to become complacent though, right? They started to take for granted their faith. They started to leave their faith. They started to worship uh, 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 pagan uh, uh, deities and gods. They started to take God out of everything in their social life. Kind of sounds like our own world right now in many ways. What happens in the midst of when people start to become complacent, when people start to turn back to uh, their own selfish designs or maybe societal designs, a prophet appears in their midst. And they start saying to the Israelites, repent, you have to turn back to God. This is not going to end well if you do not turn back to the Lord. And what happens? God permits for the uh, Babylonians to come through and to conquer and to destroy the very temple where the Lord dwelt. The temple was destroyed and the people of God were once again, as they were in times uh, of old, as they were in Egypt, they were enslaved to the Babylonians. And you think in many ways our world took for granted maybe the, the Eucharist, took for granted our faith, 
Many of us didn't. Many of us receive our Lord every single day and desire to receive, you know, that, the true presence of Christ. But even for, I think, priests, and I'll just speak for myself, sometimes there is that way that we take, you know, our, our faith for granted. Oh, I know my faith. Oh, I'll, I'll go and I'll, I'll celebrate Mass today. Sure, I'll go and do that. Let us never again take for granted our faith. It is truly a privilege to be here in this church and to be able to have this wonderful right to celebrate Mass, to worship in the way that we want to worship. But now, as we're coming back into the church, remember, as the Israelites came back after they were freed from slavery, they came back to Jerusalem, and the temple was still in ruins. And they went back and they found all of the religious ob uh, ob objects and instruments that they used to use, and they needed to rebuild that church. They rebuilt the temple. We are back here in our church, and we are rebuilding our faith. And this today, and as we open up our church, we will receive the Eucharist more and more and more. And people will continue to step up, volunteers, our wonderful volunteers, who have allowed for us to be able to live stream, our volunteers who have opened up our church so that we can offer the great sacraments of not only the Eucharist, but also of reconciliation. I think our world needs that great sacrament of reconciliation now more than ever. I think the powerful thing for us to remember is to not give in to despair or desolation or to say, woe is me or God, what is going on in our world right now? And it's rather to have that great faith. Become those prophets that were in the Old Testament. Become the disciples that God has called each of you to be. Receive that Eucharist. Not because it's for our own gain, but it is for our salvation. And we come here to worship at the altar of God. Become those beloved disciples that God desires all of us to be. As you receive the Eucharist, go home. Spread love. Spread joy. Spread the gospel message to each person in your homes and in your lives. Never let hatred have any place in your heart because it is not of God. It's of the evil one, and we want to cut that off completely. In the Eucharist, prayer, these are the things, the sacraments, the sacrament of reconciliation, these are the things that unite us to God. Let us, indeed, never take for granted the Eucharist, our faith, our church. Let us never take that for granted ever again. We can always point back in our lives, and we can say this was... A very challenging time, perhaps even a dark time for many people, turning towards many different vices and sin in their life, giving into addictions. As we come out of this now, as the church begins to reopen safely and hopefully uh, uh, quickly here, we ask that we might never be separated again from the love of God. For we have seen that throughout the course of our histories. We've seen it many, many times, we know that we're not alone, that God is with us, and he unites us in a mo so, such profound way today in the Eucharist as we receive our Lord. And on this feast day of Corpus Christi, we will end in a very special way with benediction. We will end as we have for many, many years. We used to do a procession here, but due to uh, the social distancing, difficult to do a procession, we want to still give everyone, even at home, even here, a chance to adore our Lord for a few moments and to receive that blessing in the most holy sacrament in the monstrance. Let us receive that blessing. Let us receive our Lord and let us go out and spread the love of God. Let us spread that gospel message as the disciples did, as the great prophets did to everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.